welcome to Meltdown Pod. Hi, everybody. Did you Hi. miss us? Did you even notice we were gone? I'm sure people know this, right? Yeah, no, that's what I I'm really gonna tell myself. You guys noticed. Yeah, um, <laughs> at least my friends, like guys. No, come truly, on. no, we received no messages. And you're and all my okay. friends. Yeah, <laughs> and that's okay. No one was concerned. I will say, like, glad to be back. Yes, no, I'm so happy to be here. I was telling Marty that it feels, last night felt like I was getting ready for the first day of school. I know, it's a beautiful feeling. No, we missed you guys so much. I we did. Understand. And I think, like, we took a little break because we weren't totally in love with the concept of yes. bisexual influencers. Yes, for those of you who have been here from the very start, you know it has been very up and down, not very consistent with... I think the content that yes. we're putting out there. Yes. And I think we found a new concept that like marries what we loved about bisexual influencers and then also is a way to like give someone something more than us just like yes. gabbing on about something that doesn't matter. Yes. So as you can tell, we have a different name now. Meltdown Pod. Meltdown Pod. Did I start with bisexual influencers? No, you said Meltdown. Okay, cool. I just want to no, you... remind the math. Yeah. They're probably like, who's Meltdown? Right. Meltdown is bisexual influencers. And I want you guys to know we will always be bisexual influencers. I didn't think about that. Like, we're going to pop up in people's feeds with a They're whole new like, name. I was not following this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but we're back. We're back. I'm better than ever. And we're glad to, you know, be bringing some content. No, it's so exciting. It's it so feels exciting. so good to have a mic. I guess now in front of me. I know. <laughs> We have my, so we've official. really upgraded our situation too. So if yes. people want to head over to YouTube, like we have chairs. Yes. We have backgrounds that I hope are so cute. Cozy. We have a fall candle lit. We do. It's pumpkin. I have a pumpkin Duncan iced coffee. Pumpkin Ooh, Duncan. I didn't even think about getting pumpkin. I got a cold brew. It's delicious. I was telling Marty that I'm trying to figure out the difference between cold brew and iced coffee, and people always explain it to me, and I don't know. So. I think you could I'll just you guys know rely on the fact that cold brew is always stronger. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's all you need to know. Okay. I'm sure there's other properties. Like, I'm pretty sure cold brew is steeped cold. Yeah. And, like, sat for, like, a really long time. Yeah. I think iced coffee is just, like, Whereas iced coffee quickly. is, like, yeah, basically hot coffee yeah. made ice. Yeah. So, we'll see. Last time I had a Dunkin' Cold Brew, I had the shakes, y'all. <laughs> I was fighting for my life. Yeah. So, maybe this episode I'll start going cracked out let's for... Sh- no, go all out. For First real. episode back. Um, should we talk real quick about like the concepts yes. of Meltdown Pop? Yes. So we restructured okay. a little bit. We have a lot of what you guys saw in bisexual influencers. We are just holding ourselves accountable to a little bit more structure. And we definitely want you guys to get something out of listening to us. Yes. Um, you know, we love to yap. But we, we think maybe we should yap with a little bit of a purpose, you know? Yeah. And I think it's going to be fun to keep like, we're going to keep in the beginning personal antidote stories, yes. vibes. Oh, you'll still what's been hear going our on. lives. Yes. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry, guys. You think we <laughs> will have mics in front of us and not talk about ourselves? Like, I know you guys want twisted. updates on department store boyfriend. Right. And I'm exactly. here to get them. <laughs> and then I think every, well, I don't know why I said it. I think I know every episode we're going to deep dive a certain as like aspect or thing of media yeah so we're gonna try and keep them somewhat current and then also just go back to things we love yes next week we'll be talking about fleabag so if anyone wants to watch catch up already watched and wants to talk about it so good it'll be the place to be this week i think we're just going to start with recapping what we consumed on our our like two month break Yeah. yeah yeah and like our favorite things some of my favorite things I even already talked about on the pod, but I'm just going to talk about it again because I have some antidotes. Oh, of course. I'm obsessed with the word antidote right now. No, I know. You said it incorrectly multiple times already, (laughs) too. So it's like, that's how you know. He's like, I've actually seen that antidote on a TikTok (laughs) earlier. I'm like, okay. (laughs) And well, what's antidote mean? No, I don't know. I thought, I thought. What does antidote mean? I don't know. Should we? Oh, also, now we'll both be using these handy dandy electronics yes aka our ipads and computers <laughs> which will hopefully keep us more on track as well like having a little yeah 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 um those of you who were listening to bisexual influencers you guys know we would take like 30 seconds of silence trying to google something <laughs> yes yeah. now yeah, we yeah. have a computer easily accessible and we can look up whatever mm-hmm. the fuck we're and like an outline of some sort yes yes so the i think we could go through the way the episodes are kind of going to be structured yeah. We are just kind of going to chat for the first few minutes, give you life updates. Um, we can still do our chatty topics. If there's any pop topics we want to talk about, 
we will do that. But this is mostly going to be focused on media recaps, like Marty said. Um, so we're still going to tell you guys what we watched that week, what we listened to, but we're just going to focus a little bit more on that. Yep. And just give you guys the lowdown. I also think this is going to be really good if you struggle a lot with like keeping up with content and are constantly in need of recommendations. I always go through like these slumps where I'm like, I feel like I've seen every single movie and I can't think of a new one. So I think this is a good, hopefully we can give you some good recommendations of yeah things you can watch, listen to, read. Yeah. And then I think we're going to try and like definitely keep up to date with like movies and albums and stuff like that yes. that we're interested in and then have those dedicated episodes. So it's like if you see a new album coming out, more than likely we'll talk about it that yes. week. And, and if you ever want in. us to talk about something, message us, comment. Yes. We will be more than happy to listen to something. I think this will also help us branch out into new things. Cause I agree. I know I'm like a chronic rewatcher of things. I go back to my comfort movies and stuff all the time, mm -hmm. comfort albums. So we need to branch out. I think we already have some throwback episodes planned. Maybe a Gilmore Girls yes. once we get a little bit deeper in the fall. Maybe a little Nancy Myers. Nancy Myers. So just let us know what you want to see. Yeah. We are so happy to be here. So happy to be here. I'm so excited right now. Me too. Okay. Should we talk about a few things we did this break together? Because I feel like yes. there's a good amount. Oh my god. We've been concerting it up. So many concerts. We saw, I think you guys. They know about Maggie. Maggie. But we saw Lizzie. Omar. Omar. And we ended the and summer seeing Wallace. Wallace. As you could tell by Marty's beautiful t-shirt. It was so much fun, guys. It was so much fun. Wait, I just realized I'm like merged out. No, you're merged out. I just thought out. the colors like went together. No, yeah. no, you're so full right now. I feel like you belong in like a cabin. Yeah. In like New York. In upstate, uh, upstate New York. New York. <laughs> Thank you, actually. That's like, no, I'm like seriously what I'm always like going that. for. Yeah. No, I love like, it. I see upstate it Upstate New York. Like, I'm a fashion girly in the city, but I'm like taking a break yes you're upstate. on your weekend upstate. yeah like my outfit's not perfect because i'm not in new york but yeah. it's still <laughs> good slow right mindful life yeah yeah exactly um but yes concerts yeah wallows i think wallows was so much fun lazy mcalpine was so much fun yeah do you have a favorite tears were shed i think wallows is my favorite yeah because i wasn't expecting to love it so much i was saying like the week we were going i was like I, like, listen to their music. I don't know if I'm, like, the biggest. I honestly didn't know if I really considered myself, like, a fan. Um, I also think we talk about this a lot, but, like, the definition of a fan at this point in time is, like, what does that even mean? Yeah. Um, But truly, it was so much fun. Like, I also think. were just so good. Both of us just love live music so much. That part of love it was just, like, music. like I didn't know every Wallow song, obviously. Yeah. Like, you knew, like, a landslide more than I did. But yet, just like being there and like experiencing so it and fun. how good they were, it's just like, yes, the whole experience. That concert to me felt like the vibes of the people around you are so important. Like, yeah, we were sitting next to this mom with like her two younger girls there, and the girls were dancing. The mom was dancing. Um, I also, it, it obviously depends on the artist you see too. Like for Lizzie, there there were a lot of people like sitting down for Lizzie. I've never yeah, experienced that in a concert. Me either. Um, but I guess with like Lizzie songs, it's like hard to dance to when you're bawling your eyes out you know right um but i think wallows was just like the perfect end of summer because you're just like dancing and it's like an outdoor amphitheater so we're just having so much fun feeling the breeze like you see the sunset it just felt like so you know what it felt like it felt like a coming of age movie it like did. the concert scene in a coming of age movie uh -huh. and i think especially because wallows has that music that feels like it's supposed to be in a coming of age movie i would love to like shove some wallows music into like a lot of soundtracks yes you know it would do wonders. It would do wonders. I We've been getting so lucky with the Michigan weather. Like, no, not to get into the weeds already, but yeah. guys, like, it has been, like, seriously beautiful yes. here. And like, those of you who are new listeners, we do live in Michigan, and we that's why we talk about the weather constantly. Yes. Let me tell you. It's never consistent. We're, like, Midwesterners hardcore at heart. No, truly. So it, We're going to we'll, talk about We'll be weather. talking about Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think the outdoor concerts have just been so good because the weather has been chef's kiss perfect chef's kiss um we also celebrated your birthday it was my birthday it was your birthday we went to a great dinner oh it was so good so good um there was milk bread there was orange wine nothing better than bread and butter and orange wine let me tell you yeah seriously like i need to be eating more bread and butter i like, feel like i went through a phase and then i fell out of it but like i need to get back <laughs> it was in a phase. you were sending a photo of bread and butter <laughs> constantly i like went through my Kerrygold butter and then I was just like, I don't want to have bread and, and butter it has anymore. To be yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. I am obsessed with people making their own butter though, like adding herbs and such. Nara Smith era. Yeah. Loading. I'm almost like, what? Did, what would it take for me to do that? You know no, what I truly. mean? Truly. Truly. I've like, I've I've been seeing a lot of people make their own like cinnamon toast crunch. And I saw Nara Smith do it first, and now people are just making their own cereal. See, here's my thing with making your own cereal. <laughs> Every time I see someone making it, it does not look like they make enough. I don't know if I'm just like a fat no, bitch. No, no. But like, when I'm sitting down That's for cereal, I'm having a bowl and a half. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and no. Minimum two servings. Yeah. And it's like, you guys are making not even a whole bowl, like a half. Like, I, I see what I've Nara Smith makes for her kids, and I'm like, you have multiple kids. <laughs> That's not going to feed one. Like, I don't know why I'm emotional. Oh my gosh, um, yeah. What else did we do? Did I'm sure. Concerts? Um, I don't think we have we talked think... since. Yeah. Tigers game. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, we went to a Tigers game, so we also celebrated Shannon's birthday. Um, went to a car- Tigers game, did some karaoke. We've just been having a lot of fun, and we've been doing a lot of trivia. We kind of did a lot of trivia over the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we have a really exciting October. Oh, we have up. such an exciting October, guys. So many fun things coming. Sweat. Sweat this weekend. Yep. We have opening night, guys. Detroit gets opening night. I know it's exciting. I can't wait. I'm honestly kind of scared. Like, I'm nervous. I haven't had the nervous feeling at a concert in a long, like, probably since I saw Boy Janus, because I saw them after Taylor Swift. But, like, you feel kind of sick after, like before the artist comes on because you're like i have no idea what to expect and i feel like opening night I'm yeah gonna be extra sick to my stomach we don't know the set list we don't know anything i know and it's such an interesting way to tour because i mean they have songs together obviously but yeah. like their even newest albums aren't that similar yeah. like I, I don't think it's gonna be super cohesive but i'm yeah, really excited for it but me too and i also am curious like is someone gonna go first someone goes second yeah, and then together? they like intertwine together yeah or is it gonna be like back and forth back and forth but I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. And I'm mm. glad we get to find out first. Yeah. Follow us on TikTok, guys. We'll, yeah. we'll be posting TikTok. We'll be posting don't sweat. Sweat exposure. Up. Yeah. yeah. I'm so excited. Me as well. It's going to be so much fun. Okay. And yeah. I thank you. For Shall we talk time. about the Singapore Grand Prix? 2024 yeah, Singapore Grand Prix. I saw this. Sorry, that just made me think. I saw this annoying TikTok of this girl, um, which I'm not gonna go on a whole rant about it. But she goes, "Do you?" It was like when the demure thing was happening. She was like, "Do you see the way I say Grand Prix?" Because <laughs> she's like French. And then she was talking about a whole bunch of like F1 F1 words, and she's like, "That's how they're supposed to be said." And then the comments were like, "Girl, yeah, get wait, a life. was she joking?" No, I don't think she oh, was joking, that's so which horrific. is what was so that's scary. My fear, yeah. Um, in my head, I was like, I think this is maybe what colonization colonization was kind of like she's like it's not grand prix it's grand prix it's like okay girl yeah that's so horrible um but that just made me think about that but yes yeah, singapore grand prix singapore grand prix weekend. yesterday in fact yep i was house sitting so the house i usually house sit at they have a giant tv and like they have like two speakers on the wall and like three speakers in the front so it's kind of like a movie home movie theater situation so it literally, because the couch is like facing the wall, I genuinely thought mm-hmm. the cars were behind me. I would hear like thumps and I was like, is somebody in the house? I'm like, oh no, that's just coming from the race. Wait, I'm obsessed with that. Um, But because of that, I couldn't Dream really take my, my mid-race nap, usually around lap 20 to lap 30. I take a little 10 minute nap. Yeah. Did you watch the whole thing? I watched the whole thing. This race made me oh, wow. like really anxious for some reason. Yeah. I know, 8 a.m. race and I stayed awake the whole time. Yeah, I didn't even know you were up. I love that for you. Um, yeah, 8 a.m. race again. It was a night race, which I love. Yep. And a street race. I think I'm noticing now I love street races. Mm-hmm. Like, I never picked up on, like, the pattern of the ones I, like, more tend to yeah. be in, like. Yeah, I think this one's also cool because it's on the marina, similar to, like, Monaco. Yeah. Where, like, they drive around the water and around, obviously, the streets. It's, um, it was so crazy when they would pan up and there was like the expressway above them. I'd that be was like, crazy. what the hell? That's I would get into an accident insane. if I was on the expressway. Yeah, I would be, be looking, like, huh? I'd be getting out of my car and getting clips. Like, I free literally tickets, thought about tickets. how cool of a shot it would be, like, ahead. I'd like just looking yeah. down. That would be and sick. And I'm zooming by. Like, yeah. 
I was like, I need to go there just to do that. Seriously. <laughs> Imagine someone. Jumped. I never that, thought about that. That would be crazy. That would be insane. Mm hmm. Oh, no one do that <laughs> please um yeah i watched every like any big grand prix i try and watch a movie related to it and by that i just mean for monaco i obviously watched monte carlo before then. yeah um just because i don't think there's many movies that like fit into like the f1 racing but i did watch crazy rich asians because it's set in singapore so i watched that friday night and it just got me like prepped one because singapore looks so fucking cool i want to go so bad yeah me too um, and obviously, the way Crazy Rich Asians is like filmed is super cool. And then the race on its own is just super cool because you're literally around the city in like real time. Yeah. Which is crazy. Crazy Rich Asians is like one of the best movies on the planet. No, it's top tier. It's so up there. It's top. Yeah. If you don't like that movie, I don't there's like something you. seriously yeah, wrong with you. Yeah, we wouldn't ever get along if you don't like Crazy Rich <laughs> yeah. Asians. Like, Truly one of the best movies ever created. Yeah. I also, speaking of that, I. Only watch up to the end credits. Like, usually the credits start and I turn it off. Yeah. There's a little bonus scene at the end, which is why, because I was always like, there's obviously a sequel to the book. And I was like, why do people think there's going to be a sequel to the movie? Because they hint at it after the credits. They have a little Marvel situation where it's like Aster and she's, I think yes. that's her name. And yeah. then the like guy and they like smile at each other. And I was like, oh, that's where everybody's getting this from. Mm hmm um so for years i was like where's everybody like huh? getting this info bro i've only read I like want, crazy I rotations i haven't read the rotations. second novel so bad yeah that would, that would be, be life-changing yeah i was like googling it and i saw something about it maybe being in the works for 2025 but those rumors go around yeah all the time they're like next they year it's coming, like, it's coming. Year. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um okay should we talk about the top five yeah okay so lando it. norris came out on top when it win three p P1. P1. Um, 25 points. Max Verstappen, 18 and second. Oscar Piastri, a double McLaren. Podium. Podium. That's the word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 15 points. George Russell, 12 points, which is interesting because he was complaining about the car like the whole time. And then they went on to like complain about the car after. Yeah. But he did pretty well. Yeah. For having a. Yeah. He car did a, he didn't re a really like. good race. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Charles Leclerc, 10 points in fifth. Yep. Sick. Um, This race was so anxiety-inducing for me because one with the heat, I was like, they're going to pass out in the car. It's like, yeah. they're going to pass out in the car. Um, So because of that, I think everybody, I think everybody on the grid did a great job Um, given the, like, how hard the race is. Um, But yeah. I don't think it really affects them. Like, Charles Leclerc was like, it, it's so hot and it's awful, but you don't think about it, like, at all while yeah. you're racing. And then it's like, it's always right when they have to get out of the car when yeah. they're like, Did you see I'm when gonna they were pass like, out. Trying to jump out. I think it was Franco. It was his first Singapore race. It was his first night race. He's, like, new to F1. Yeah. So, Franco Colapinto, he, like, got out of the car. He stumbled and, like, had to hold on to the car once he jumped out. Yeah. I pass out. I don't do well in here. I think that's like when it hits them. It's like after yeah, the race. Because the adrenaline is just like. Yeah. So insane. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I understand if it keeps you going. But I also, the announcers on Sky Sports were saying that, because I think one of them did that race, but you know how they're like the yeah. racers or something like Um, It was like, it feels awful when you're like, because you know how they have their like energy drink thing. Uh -huh. It was like, you're drinking like a scorching hot energy drink. And then when it's over and then you have nothing to drink, he's like, it's the most unbearable thing ever. I like didn't know that, that they had energy drinks in there. Yeah, it's why they, I, I thought, thought they had they water straws. And it grosses me out to said... think that they drink energy drinks through oh. a pouch. Oh, well, I don't know. Yeah. Like maybe I, it is. I no, feel like no, it, would it make might sense be. I'm water. just like saying, like I wish it was water for them. Yeah. Like, I couldn't imagine like mid race, like sipping and it being like a monster. Like yeah. why wouldn't you want like yeah. fresh cold water? You know what I Red mean. Red Bull has to drink their Red Bull. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just Red. I don't know. Um. I hope. I hope it is water too, though. Yeah. Hopefully it is. I'm. Guys, once again, I don't know anything. I am just repeating. No, I know I what you're talking about. I think they said that. And I okay. just think it's crazy. Like, okay. Like, if I was about to pass out, like, I wouldn't be like, hand me a Celsius. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd be like, let's get a water up in here. Water. Yeah. yeah. And you would think, like, I know weight means a lot, but you would think they could, like, throw one little cold pack, like, mm -hmm. in their backs or something. Yeah. And I'm sure they do. Just I bet there's something. something. Yeah. 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 Um, fastest lap went to Daniel Ricardo. For his last race, probably. At least that's what the girls are saying. 
I was tearing up all day yesterday. Think about really, Daniel I like don't care, but I think that comes off a little harsh. Yeah, no, I love Daniel Ricardo. I I like him a lot, and I think he like has a great personality, but I don't know. I feel like at least like maybe Drive to Survive too. Like I have like a bias because I watch that show and I sometimes wonder if I just like only watch the races and never watch that show what my thoughts would be but he was given like so many chances yeah yeah like so I think that's many that's kind of what makes so many yeah like it's not like he was like a, like some underrated driver that like is doing bad you know and mm-hmm. then it's like oh my god give him a chance it's like yeah he's been on good teams multiple times and kind of like fumbled I mean like he left Red Bull on his yeah. own accord yeah so it's just like interesting. He was with mm-hmm. McLaren for a minute. Like, yeah. I don't know. Um, and then I also feel like right now, like Yuki usually tends to do better than him and they have the same car. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit like maybe his time is up, but I don't even mean it in a bad way. It's just yeah. like, it's sad because he's like obviously a fan favorite, but like, yeah. I don't know. Let's make room for some newbies. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Um, I don't, I honestly don't know why it, made me so emotional i think he is a fan favorite for me well i think like, it made like yeah just like um, i still think it's just sad i don't know because i think the same with drive to survive and then but i think for me with drive to survive you see so much of somebody giving their all and trying mm-hmm. and seeing his like interviews and him talking about it it's really sad when you just try at something and it's like this might be the end he's had a he, th- 13 years in the sport which is a long time so right i agree with like you i'm almost like a lot of yeah chances um But I don't know. I don't think anybody wants to, like, go out that way, which is why I'm glad he got fastest lap. Um, I first time I ever voted for a driver of the day, I voted for Daniel Ricciardo. Really? That's funny. I was wondering if he was going to win right after the announcers basically said to, like, go vote for him. (laughs) They're like, yeah, I wouldn't be upset if he won. Yeah. (laughs) And then, like, it shot from, like, a Lando winning by, like, 50 percent to Daniel Ricciardo winning. I mean, Lando doesn't need another driver of the day. Not only does it not mean anything, but he also has like seven yeah. this season. So yeah. Um, but Alex Alban retired early because mm-hmm. they think a plastic bag maybe or something got stuck in his car. I don't even know. Which is crazy. Yeah, there was like the thing about. I think this happens a lot with street races. There's so much debris. Yeah. Everywhere, as opposed to being like on a track. Uh huh. Um. Because there was debris everywhere. And, it, it, and a lot of it looked like it was from the tires as they were, like, wearing off. There was, like, a lot of stuff on the ground. I, was I like, know. They're going to hit something. Also, I no safety car. I to see that, though. I know. No safety car. First time in a Singapore race, no safety car. Um, Because I've been, like, really liking this, like, little bit of, like, a Williams comeback the past, mm-hmm. like, two races. Especially with Franco being in the yeah. past, too. Because he's doing so fucking well. He did well. such a good first, he, like, first did Singapore his interview, race. And he was, crazy. like, beating himself up, being like, I should have gotten the yeah. points. And it was like, bro, this is your second time yeah. in the F1 car? And you came 11? I know. Logan I Sargent could never. love Franco Colapinto. I know. Me, too. I'm, like. He's a yapper. Have you seen his interviews? He's just talking away. Yeah. I'm kind of obsessed with him. He's I, so I, like, funny. hope he goes to the other Red Bull seat. Yeah. I'm like, Let's drop Danny. Honestly, yeah. I'm like slightly over Yuki too, but I think that's also like an unpopular opinion. But yeah, I don't know. Actually. They just get so upset in the car that it like makes me, it almost makes me anxious. You know, like it translates to me in a bad yeah. way. Yeah, Yuki, yeah. And that's Yuki's how I feel always about yelling in his car. And it's like, well. That's when Max Verstappen's radio is, is on. I'm yeah. like, I have to mute this because uh-huh. I get so mad. I could just get anxious. <sighs> I don't know. It's just like, and I feel it. I feel this way. We talked about this last time, and like they're in the cool down room, and usually if Lando doesn't get P one, and he's like yeah, still on the podium, he'll butt. be like so grumpy. Or it's like you're a grown man. Yeah, L- like you're a grown man. Uh huh. Um, and I understand it. It's like a sport. You're competitive. Blah blah blah. Um, as some people in the world might say, boys will be boys. But maybe let's like calm down a little bit. So, and this is why, like, I just want to say, like, Lewis Hamilton is, like, every race he becomes more and more my favorite because he's such a fucking class act. And I don't know if it's because, like, part of it, I think, has to do with the fact that he's just won so much already. So it's kind of, like, a little bit of, like, not as much on his chest because mm-hmm. he's, like, been able to he's win. Like, and like been world champion. Yeah. Seven times. Yeah. But it's just, like, crazy because he's so chill and he, like... Mm-hmm. Just like doesn't let it affect him, and I'm yeah. like, you're so classy. Like he's also I just the second oldest on the grid, so it's yeah. like he's like a 
He's matured. He's like, He's I'm so over matured, it. But I just love it. I wish they all had more of an outlook like that. Only because I think it'd be just healthier for all of them to feel yeah. that way. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. I wonder if like F1 has like, t- like required psych meetings oh my god like probably not but they should and that's a genius you know, they like should Ted all have Lasso, to go to therapy where, like they all had to do their therapy sessions <laughs> once they got a team therapist um but that should that definitely should be definitely a be a thing yeah but um but lando had a really good race he was like so ahead by like 20 seconds like it was almost so a much 30 of second it. gap towards yeah. the end um he hit the wall twice mm-hmm. and was still be able to like still yeah. ahead um his brakes were locking up a little like, bit towards the end where he was like yeah, yank the car. I think a lot of them were having a lot of like power steering issues, which I don't mm-hmm. really know what that means, but I think it's just because they were doing so many yeah ziggy zags on that circuit. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised there were no once again with the safety car that nothing major happened because it, the walls are so narrow. Oh my god! At some places, on... it looks like they it's so narrow that they almost just drive through it straight because yeah. it's like wiggly, but they're going through it like exactly. Yeah. So it was freaky it is freaky but it makes for a really good race yeah a lot of them were having issues with like the front wing because it would tap the wall and that's uh-huh. how you know how near it was because it seemed like almost barely the car could fit yeah let alone all the cars racing and like getting around each other so when someone would would try to overtake or like cut in front of somebody i was like they're gonna crash they're mm-hmm. gonna crash which is why like i'm saying it was once again i couldn't take my my mid-race nap that I was so anxious the whole time. I was like, something's going to happen while I'm asleep. I'm, I'm but it's like asleep. glad no one crashed because it's like, that's good. Yeah. But it just always makes her more of an interesting race. The when, safety like, car. Yeah. yeah. People move up. And it just gives like, it like pretty much renews the race. Because yeah. when it gets to those, like those last 10 laps, it's like, well, I also not think the interesting usually. thing here. And I think people almost thought the same thing with Monaco where you, a lot of teams were prepared. I, who was it? I don't remember what team exactly it was, but they were like, it It felt like they were preying on people's downfall because they're like, yeah. we're expecting contact here. So uh-huh. beware that a safety, like they were almost praying for a safety or car. Or when Magnuson, whatever happened with his car, they were hoping mm-hmm. there was going to be a safety car. Yeah. Because, but then he was able to make it to the pit lane. So it seems like everybody had a safety car part of their strategy, which yeah. makes sense if it's happened continuously for the past 15 years. But first one without one. Mm-hmm. So, I wonder. I wonder what their strategy is going to be like next year. Are they going to like? I know prep for no safety. Well, because I feel like Lewis car? Hamilton starting out in soft tires, they pretty much said was like a safety car yeah. strategy, which is just like silly. I yeah. wonder who decides that, or if it's like a group decision. Yeah, I was actually looking up. I want to know more about F one strategy because I don't understand it at all. Yeah, I'm like. Okay, is it the point just to get to the front? But obviously, there's like ways you have to maneuver around every other car in the grid to get there. So I'm gonna try and do some research on that. I was yeah. That, like the more I watch, F1 I feel books. like the more I understand, <laughs> like the probably most common two strategies, which is like you either the like pitting start and go for a really long time, and then try and pit late yeah. and then have fresh tires, or the opposite yeah pit early and then try and stay on tires for like a super long time but yeah i guess there's probably like more strategy to it than just that yeah it's interesting Mm -hmm. definitely um the next race is in a month it's in october 20th which is crazy that we have to wait that long america and it's the circuits of america isn't that what it's called texas yeah Mm-hmm. I'm so sad. I want to be there so bad. I want to be there so bad too. I'm glad it's going to be on our time zone though. Sort of. Like I think three hours. Behind. Yeah, yeah. I would still just like compared to what we've been dealing with, you know. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. I guess that's not really our time zone. But I'm trying to think because it's usually it? an afternoon race, so it's actually going to be later for us. It's going to be like I want to say races start at like 3 p.m., but I could be completely wrong. Once yeah. again, I know nothing. <laughs> but yes, I'm pretty sure Texas is three hours behind. Um, And then, so, uh, d- were you watching the post-race interviews? No. Okay, so I watched one, and they were talking, and... Like the ones that are streamed on YouTube? Yeah. No. Well, I think maybe this happened on the TV. I watched a little bit of both, though. Um... They said that even if Max wins, comes in second, 
to Lando yeah, for the rest of the races. He could still win. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, Lando really needs to like not only prey on Max Verstappen's downfall, but also win and win like all the sprint races. Yeah. Which I think there's a few left. One or two. Yeah. That's so, crazy. That's so crazy. Crazy. I've been thinking a lot about Red Bull's dominance and how the downfall is kind of happening. Yeah. Oh, Similar to what we definitely. saw with Mercedes. I just think it's interesting because yeah. it's like, what is happening because you know when they're like we're upgrading the car and it's like sometimes an upgrade is not an upgrade it's Uh it's a downgrade you know what i'm saying so it's like it's i wonder what that feels like as a driver it's like everyone's having car problems but mclaren because like ferrari has been saying the same thing like they're doing things to their cars mercedes the ferrari for the past two seasons mercedes has been like going back and forth with their car trying to fix things like it's crazy Mm mm-hmm I mean, a few races ago, people like teams were taking pen- penalties on purpose to get their car more upgraded. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. Like McLaren's the only one with a car that they seem pretty happy doing. with. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting. I'm also curious with like next year with the new regulations and the way the car is going to look next year where it's like. Yeah. How's that? I keep forgetting things? that they're doing that and it kind of makes me like sad. Like the thing with like the wing that like. Yeah. And they're like, I think lowering the engine power or something. Or they're doing something that's making it more eco-friendly. Because that's like a massive priority to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It should be. Who's going to tell them about that track they built in Las Vegas and how they had to chop down a ton of trees to (laughs) do so? Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I was just going to wrap it up. Wait, well, Lewis Hamilton and George Russell suffered borderline heat stroke <gasps> after the race i didn't know that and again it happened like right when they got up but each of them got out of the car they were like what the fuck is going on and they didn't do post-race interviews which is completely okay yeah. we don't like really need those but yeah they got excused because it yeah. was so bad for them because i think their cars were that's overheating so scary the Mercedes that's cars. terrifying yeah that actually seems like my worst nightmare uh-huh like Being if hell is real car, y'all and i have to be in scorching hot hell <laughs> I would say pray for me, I'm but I'm already so dead. Weak. Like I truly would have passed out. Like I'm surprised. No, I don't know how they do it. Like I could pass out on a day where I've had enough water and it's not no, that seriously. hot out. So imagining a day when it's a really hot and you haven't had any water and you're yeah. driving a very fast car. And it's car. also there's no way for them to adjust to the climate too, where it's like, yeah, maybe you're there for a week, but you're not like in a car. Like mm-hmm. your body heat, the car's body heat. The humidity and heat outside. Yeah. Seriously sounds like my worst nightmare. It really does. Um, <sighs> okay, so I was just going to wrap it up with the constructors, which McLaren is now at the top. Well, it was last week too, but they're, they're getting a healthy lead mm-hmm. at 516 points. Red Bull at 475 in second, and then Ferrari in third with 441. Craziness. And you know what would be like so crazy and sexy and awesome is if actually Ferrari got up to second and it was mclaren ferrari red bull like that would be chef's kiss that would be iconic. and i'm still praying for like a carlos Sainz win before Please. the end of the season carlos maybe Sainz, two if you can like let's carlos make it happen Sainz. yeah uh there was like a thing in the race where they asked carlos to let leclerc <laughs> i always feel funny when they say his name ahead um and i think it had to do with the points because since he has more points the points would i don't even know how the points work i just I just watch um, to get ahead. And then I was like, I don't think Carlos is going to let him through. But yeah. once again, it was that same thing where it was like, I forgot what race it was, but the tweets after they were like, what are you going to do? Fire me? Like, <laughs> or maybe he said it himself. I don't remember. Um, but I, I didn't think he was going to let them through. Yeah. So the whole thing with like Ferrari and Carlos leaving. And I also wonder how Lewis feels with like, which I guess like Mercedes is in the top three. So in the constructors. So maybe he's like, excited to be yeah well they're they're fourth no yeah okay well (laughs) i don't know i'm just curious to see how it's gonna play out i would assume they're fourth i I can't imagine any other team yeah but yeah yeah mclaren red bull ferrari is right Mm -hmm. now yeah crazy carlos signs win would would heal me yeah heal me um alex albon win would always would also heal me but Maybe that's a stretch. Uh huh. That's a reach that at this reach. given moment in time. But I think it is a good sign for next season. So far, them getting their shit together, Williams. Mm-hmm. Maybe Pulling score a few up. points, get some more funding. 
Definitely. And let's get Carlos Sainz in a good fucking car. Exactly. And Alex Albon. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, see you. Enjoy the rest of the app. October. Yeah. No F1. no F1 recap until October. Sad. That's so what are sad. What do? I don't know. I'm going to kill myself. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> it's oh, that no. serious. Yeah. On record. Yeah. We had such a good sports weekend, by the way. And I do want to mention that because we had a Lions win. We had a U of M win. Yeah. And we had a McLaren Lando Norris win. That reminded me I just needed to, I need to check my fantasy football league. Check it. See how it did. Check it as soon as possible. I'm so scared. Check it. Check it. I'm so scared. (laughs) Okay. Ready to recap? Yeah. Do we jump into our summer recap? (laughs) We We... watched, I watched a lot. Yeah. I was sick for a weekend, guys, over the summer. Kid you not, I watched nine movies in a weekend. (laughs) Um, My personal best, dare I say, but it was all mostly rewatches. Do we want to go back and forth? Yeah. Okay. You start. Okay. I did. So here's what I watched. I did TV first. So TV, I finished Ugly Betty, which is kind of where we left off last time. Classic. So good. I love, Marty and I were actually kind of talking about this yesterday. I love sitcoms or shows like dramedies that last for a long time. I want to be watching a show for like a two month period because it's so long. Yeah. Um, I will say sometimes you end up getting bored of them like Grey's Anatomy that I don't think I could watch that now with like their 20 seasons that they have. But I think Ugly Betty was like the perfect amount of seasons and episodes in a season. And then I am currently finishing my rewatch of Dynasty, which I've never like realized how much of a hit or miss that show is. Um, Either a lot of people don't like know about it or people know about it and they don't like it. I really like it, but I think it's because it's like dramedy like soap opera to its court like the craziest shit happens in that show and you're like this is so unserious. It, it is giving ugly betty a little no i feel it's like so giving ugly betty um but i haven't watched the final season yet so i'm wrapping up season four and i'm on the final season so i'll finally be done with dynasty i feel like it's always hard for me to watch the last season of a show mm-hmm. so i will finish it and give you guys my thoughts but that's really the tv i've been watching i also rewatch fleabag yes but- yeah I have really just, like, Fleabag is pretty much it for TV. I also finished up Bear. I don't remember if I finished it by the time we were wrapping up the pod. Um, It's an amazing TV show. It truly is. I'm excited for season four. It's when you, like, start watching a TV show late, but that's still airing, it's difficult because by the time I got to season three of The Bear, it was, yeah. like, had been out for, like, a week or yeah. two weeks. And then it was like, well, now I have to wait for season four, like a really long time. Yeah. So it's, I, it's like a blessing and a curse, you yeah. know, because now I'm like caught up. But at the same time, it's like, well, I want more because I just binged, you mm-hmm. know. So it's like, I know what it's like to have all of it. Yeah. And I don't have it's that like anymore. Give me more. Right. I and know. then both of us have been watching a lot of Formula One. That's the only other thing Guys, I, so much TV Formula wise, one. really. Um, when they were on their summer break, just know we were down bad, y'all. Yeah. We were, we were finding anything to hold on to. <laughs> we really were. Like I was watching a lot of YouTube, I think, when, like, Formula One was on their summer break. And I don't know if that, like, has to do with each other, but on the weekends, like, Sunday morning, I'm like, fuck, what am I supposed to watch? I know. It's so sad because, like, there's only so many races left, too. I and know. then they take another break before the season starts up again. But I'm I looking know. forward to yes, the race, race this weekend. weekend. It's a double header, I think, right? Not like a so. race next weekend too. Yes, they're doing Baku. Yeah. I'll. I'm not even gonna try. I'm not even gonna <laughs> no, try. I don't know how to say it either. <laughs> um, it's been a really fun season to watch. Like I will. Dude, it's say, been so like, good. There will be some Formula One deep dive episodes for our fellow Formula One girlies. I think, especially as the season wraps up, it's been very crazy. And right now, it seems very like just up up in the air. Like there's so much going on. Yeah. That I think we're going to be shocked by the end of the season. And I don't think a season's in a long time has had so many different winners mm-hmm. of races. Yeah. Considering like Lewis Hamilton dominating for so long and then Max yeah. Verstappen for his stint of mm-hmm. time. And now it's like it's kind of creeping to a Lando Norris era if he just like yeah. slightly gets his shit together. And yeah. like even when I say that, I mean like his emotions, like the way that man is like. Yeah upset after every race is like, <laughs> like fuck, I got something to watch. yeah i'm like chill and it's crazy too because he's still so young mm-hmm. I was so, like, wait, you know what bugs me about him he acts like he's so old yeah we talk about oscar piastri and he's like he's like he's just so young i'm like 
brother you're like a year <laughs> older yeah than him. yeah and he does do that and it's weird because like last season he's like posting on instagram being like p2 so proud of myself has the biggest smile on his yes. face and it's like in the matter of like a year it's like, he like has one win and yeah. i think he said that in interviews he was like once you feel it once you like i don't know he probably said something cringy like it becomes like a drug and yeah you chase it but like you notice that shift after miami and he was like yeah because it's I'm, like I'm come on like yeah. that you used to be so happy about this yeah. you know um crazy how fast things change seriously yeah but now we have lewis hamilton he's won more than one race max obviously won more than one race norris and Two. leclerc and oscar oscar's won one oh yeah so sorry i thought you were just going through the winners oh yeah but oscar yeah. also won and then george russell also won yeah so multiple winners i know Carlos Sainz also won a race this year, no? <laughs> I'm not sure. No? <laughs> no. Um, did he? Let's I think he did. I think you're right. I feel like I remember that well, I but I'm also, I can't tell season. if that's just what I'm manifesting for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, Carlos Sainz signed to Williams. We were not yes. on the bottom when that happened. I trust we had thoughts. Uh-huh. We did. I... I'm like turning around a little bit more on my thoughts, seeing how Williams is kind of stepping up their game this season. Like mm-hmm. Alex Albon's been getting his car up there. For so real. I'm like, if that is okay. going to be the energy and they're going to be getting like, even in the range of like five to 10. Yeah. I'm like, I'm good for color signs. Yeah. Because like Ferrari's not that much higher than mm-hmm. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they haven't been finishing very well recently. Yes. Other than... And I think Albon and signs on the same team. It's like dream, yeah, team. dream team. Williams just needs to work on that car but uh signs did win australia which was the second race of the season beautiful he got p1 did lots of winners oh my god yeah verstappen win one the first race i think so yeah signs was third so i'm assuming verstappen was one crazy like at the beginning of the season i really did think i was like max is like gonna dominate just because it's been the constant pattern yeah and i think well i mean i don't know exactly when you started watching but i was really late into last year like i remember it was like november october so it's like those races it was still verstappen like yeah kind of dominating and then this year is when it's been like yeah a lot more intense yeah if you would have told me a year ago that at this point in time i'd be obsessed with cars going around in circle i genuinely wouldn't have believed you yeah i would have been like sure yeah oh i've been watching also one more tv show before we can move to like movies um Breakpoint on Netflix. I've been trying to watch the U.S. Open. Well, actually, it started with Wimbledon. I was just trying to watch a lot more to, like, understand and get, you know, what's going on more. I still, like, literally don't get it. But I think that's what I like about the Netflix stocks is, like, they teach which drive to so survive. Much. They teach you and, like... Break even even <laughs> does the thing that the one guy on Drive to Survive <laughs> I was does. About to say, it is raining, so the track is wet. <laughs> <laughs> the car is gonna move because the track is wet. The cars are sliding because the track is wet. Um, but it actually really helps you get information like in your head. Like when they yes. explain things to you over and over again. I think it's also just less overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't I didn't even understand like the love or like ten forty like whatever you say, love. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best that's a phineasium verb right Phineas i think so verb? yeah um <laughs> so yeah that's been nice to like watch understand a little bit more and then i've been like watching the u.s open and it's mm-hmm. exciting stuff dude the honey deuce i've never wanted to try something more in my life i know i except for i felt the exact same way because i was like that sounds so like lemony and oh, um, not lemony, but like melon, fruit, mm. forward, yummy. And then someone said it tastes like Sprite. Mm. And I don't like Sprite. So it was really disappointing to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like lemonade. I think it's lemonade, raspberry liqueur, and Grey Goose. Grey Goose vodka. <laughs> <laughs> we could just make it. No, should we? Let me know yeah. if you guys want to see a TikTok. I mean, I think we would have to do juice. it like. Should we do it right literally now? Literally today. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding for it to be relevant. I think the US Open like already. I think just ended this weekend. Oh. There were finals. Yeah. Tea. Yikes. Tea. Um, movies. Movies. Um, as we know, I rewatch a ton, so I am going to talk about the new movies that I watched, and two of them I did watch with Marty, so we can both talk about them. Um, most recently, I finally saw Twisters, which has been out for a very long time, and I just saw it like a week or two ago. Incredible. 
And so good. Seriously, one of the best movies I've seen in a while. So fuck Glenn Powell, save me. I save me. I don't even like Glenn Powell, and I <laughs> loved him in this, which is shocking because so he's not my type of guy. I think the thing about this movie is that it was. This is the thing with like movies that like take concepts and like kind of remake. It, this didn't really feel like a sequel because it didn't follow the same storyline. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't remember the last time I watched the first Twisters movie. Yeah, no, but you're really right. Scared. Yeah. Um. So it's like it's obviously kind of re- relevant. They have like this high technology that they're trying to use to prevent these tornadoes, but it does it in a way that isn't cring like cringy, trying too hard to be super relevant. I imagine this if like. No offense to Netflix, but if Netflix did this remake of Twisters, I feel like it would be completely different. That's a really good way to put it. Because the way that Netflix always tries to, like, incorporate social media and, like, stuff yeah. like that is always, like, yes, a little cringe. And, like, they did a good job by, like, saying, like, oh, this is, like, kind of the reason he's here. And, like, doing, like, the vlogger clips and, like, yeah. this, like, it's almost like they embraced the fact that it was cringy. Yes. Versus was, trying to make it something it isn't, yeah, you know? trying to make the audience relate to it. I think right. you watch that and you're like, holy shit, this is crazy. But you're like, it, it's real, but it's also not real. Yeah. Because you know, it's a, a lot of it is, like, very real, like, natural disasters that happen. And I like how they added the part of, like, when they go help out the families who, like, lost their homes because i think when you're watching the movie obviously like you're inside the tornado so it feels so dramatic and not real but it's like these things actually happen and like ruin people's lives Mm -hmm. i think it was done perfectly what would have made it better for me was a little smoochy smoochy poo at the end with daisy i know and didn't they cut it they cut it they cut it they cut it but i really enjoyed it i thought it was so fun so good i was talking to shannon about it um on sunday not saturday we were doing some work at a coffee shop at uh, Martin's job. Um, and I was talking about Daisy Edgar Jones and her accent. And then it, like, worked. At the beginning, I was like, her accent's, like, kind it of funny. Really it really caught me off. It right? really caught but me off. But then Shannon was thinking about it from the perspective that, like, she was from this, like, place in Oklahoma. Then she goes to New York. And then she was, like, in terms of the storyline, it makes sense why her accent's kind of in and out. But I think for us, maybe, or at least that the the accent was throwing me off is because I see Daisy Edgar Jones as Marianne from Normal People. Yeah. So to me, she is like a like British speaking character and English speaking character. Also like this role is like so unserious compared to her other ones that it's almost like, yeah, I couldn't tell like if she was in on the joke or not almost, yes. you know what I mean? Cause she's like, I would put her in like a serious actor category. Yes. And not that this wasn't like, I think it was a really well done movie. Like even the way it was shot was beautiful. Yeah. But it wasn't like the same thing as like normal people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The storylines are just so different. Yeah. And it's also like if Daisy Edgar Jones was in New York, does she not meet up with Connell Waldron there? Right, right. (laughs) Are they in different universes? (laughs) (laughs) But I loved it. The soundtrack too. So good. So good. So good. good. There was bangers in there. No, there were such How'd they do that? I don't know. It was so good. But I saw that. I saw It Ends With Us. And then I also saw Deadpool and Inside Out 2. Both of those I saw with Marty. We did a double feature night. Yes. And it was interesting. I almost wish we would have done. No. Actually, because Deadpool was so long. I was going to say I wish we would have done it the other way around. Because we watched Inside Out 2 first and then Deadpool. Halfway through Deadpool, I was like, I'm about to fall asleep. Yeah, me too. And I didn't enjoy Deadpool. As yeah. much as Inside Out. Inside Out, like, seriously, those movies. It was so good. They're so good. Dude, and, I like, just the way I'm going to buy them on DVD for, like, my future <laughs> kids and nieces and nephews, That's like, they they're really important it. movies to watch. Yes. Like, the fact that I found comfort in them as, like, a 24 year old man, like, means mm-hmm. that's an important movie. You know? Yeah. I think, especially the second one, it was really, really mm-hmm. well done. And the first one was too. Like, they both made me cry. Yeah. It's just, like, understanding your emotions. I think especially for a kid, it's, like, I, I didn't understand my emotions as a kid, and I feel like nobody explained them to me. Yeah. There's, like, you're being irrational, and I'm, like, okay, what what is happening? Why am <laughs> well, why I being am irrational? I being, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Deadpool was just a little bit too, like, like, I understand they try, like. Deadpool is an interesting Marvel concept because mm-hmm. it's so unserious, and, Yeah. Yeah, it's also interesting to like they do that unserious bit, but then they want their other movies to be taken seriously. So they try and like mesh them together, and it just doesn't work. Yeah, because like you can't have like 
Deadpool and Wolverine in a movie, but then take the Wolverine movie, like his separate movies, yes. so seriously, like as if it's like a real thing. Yeah. And then like Deadpool's like making breaking third wall jokes. Yeah. I don't know. I'm also just not a big Ryan Reynolds fan. Yeah. I really like the opening scene of that movie though. Yes. Baby Bob. Well, also a really good soundtrack, honestly. So good. Had some sneaky songs in there that I was No, like, for sure. So good. It was so good. Um but yeah, those were the new movies that I watched. And I just have three rewatches that I think are highlights that I have notes on. When I was sick, I watched Footloose. I, I was in bed for like two days, y'all. Just I did not get up. I watched Footloose 2011. Such a good fucking movie. <laughs> I haven't seen it in so long. And I for me, like original Footloose is just like out of my time. But you know when he like plugs in the iPod? Like I okay. remember watching that in 2011 being like, this is a masterpiece. Footloose is the one where like they're not allowed to dance, yeah, right? And like, illegal. yeah, jump back, <laughs> which is my favorite line from Footloose. If you guys were wondering, and then what's the song where it's like, "Please draw me a fake ID." I, the songs in there are just classic. Mm-hmm. They're just so good, and I just love it. It was really, really good. It just sparked something in me where I was like, "I love this." And then Matilda, which yes, I. Never realized I had such an emotional connection to it. The the older that I've gotten, the more I've watched it. I'm like, holy shit, this is incredible. It moved up on my letterbox top four. It's now in there. Obsessed. Um, I don't know if yours has changed. Um, mine hasn't changed in so long. But yeah. I need to do like a refresh of it because yeah. I don't it's just like I I have a hard time like taking that too seriously, I think. Yeah. Because like I think Not I want to start doing it where it's like movies i'm loving at the time or like recent watches i loved because john tucker must die like genuinely is my favorite movie on the planet but it's like yeah. if you know me you know that you know like it doesn't need to be in my lower box yeah. top four you know but like i feel like i can't move it anywhere else i know, you know i know i saw i've seen this tiktok of this girl before she's like anytime somebody asks me what my favorite movie or my favorite book of all time is i take it so seriously like it's like a life or death question right but it's like in reality like if you have four favorite movies of all time, you could say any one of them. I think for me, I'm just like, but then that means I care more about this one than I <laughs> yes, do the other one. <laughs> yes. Um, and yeah, so I, I just need to like take it uh, seriously. I don't know why I do. Like now even saying it out loud, I'm like, I don't know why yeah. I care, you know? Yeah. I wonder what it is. There has to be some studies done. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Say. And I, I think like I just feel like protectiveness like. over my favorite yeah. things too, where it's like, you guys don't get John Tucker must die like I do. It's like, like you that was seriously my sexually it. awakening. Like I knew when I was like, too young to be watching that movie by the way because my sister was probably watching it and i remember like something about my aunt's house like for some reason we were watching it there or, like maybe my aunt owned yeah. it or rented it and just being like i'm gay like and so a that movie is me. just like the best to me and i'm like he's so sexy and then they put him in and, a thong like yes. be so for real and i just like remember it being so like empowering like i it's I so have, good. My whole childhood, like, only had friends that were that girls, pretty much. Female friendship. Yes. We so it's like this. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. The scene of them eating junk food on the bed is one of the best scenes. The hot mom. It's like, I've ever I, seen. So good. Uh, yeah. Every time I, like, want to write something now, I'm, like, always thinking, like, how can I incorporate, like, yes. the hot 2000s mom vibe? Yes. Because it's like, I find it such an, an important trope. Mom. Yeah. <laughs> <Go away. laughs> it's so important. I hope we don't lose those. No, it's so good. And hopefully that's making a comeback. Um, so I'm Matilda, and then recently I rewatched Upgraded, which is the one on Amazon Prime with. Cam- I don't remember her name. Um, Camila Mendez. Yeah, and she, she's in that, and we talked about this on bisexual influencers before. And we were like, the ending was kind of abrupt. I've seen this movie. It's I think it's become a comfort movie for me. It's I good. keep rewatching it, and I think the idea that it's actually the more that I've watched it, Marty. The more things make sense to me, and I'm like, okay, maybe this isn't as, like, abrupt as I thought it was. Yeah. I do think the ending could have been a little bit long. Like, them just, like, going into the room and, like, that being that. I'm like, no, I need this to wrap up a little bit better. But I saw little, like, pieces at the end. <laughs> the ending is so... No, the ending is random. No, I was like, like, does she live there? Like, right, I right. <laughs> I remember being so confused when she walks into that room. Because they're, <laughs> they're going to have house. sex. They're going to have sex too. They like make it seem like they're like, oh, we gotta hook up yeah. right now. Like it's fun. Yeah, it's just confusing too because they make it seem like so much time has passed because she somehow has this gallery and all this money now and it art everywhere. Yeah. But then at the same time, it's like I think they say something like it's been a week. Yeah, like six months or something like that. I'm like, it's 
Huh? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And it, it, it doesn't have to make sense. That's the best part. I would like it to is make it's sense, just like a good movie. Yeah. It's so good. I love it. I haven't rewatched it, but I should. Yeah, it's become it's become a rewatch movie mm-hmm. for me. I, I like, like movies that like have the glitz and the glamour yes. aspect. Do you know what I mean? This like I like that she's always in like beautiful dresses like, and like too cringe. It's like cringe, not too cringe. There's like a there's the scene where she's like he's kissing her for the first time, like after they go to like the bars when they leave the like art gallery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she's like, he says <laughs> something, and she goes, "You're done," and I'm like. Why would they write that? Uh huh. But then they kiss, and I'm like, oh my god, two beautiful people kissing. It's like, <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I know, and that said. guy came out of nowhere. I've oh never seen god. him he in anything. Another Zoe. I haven't seen he that. Was, his name is. Um, so maybe he didn't come out of nowhere, but to me, he did. He was in the other Zoe, and he was also in something else. I don't remember what. He's recently in a movie. He's hot. So hot. So hot. The British accent. So good. Oh, his name is Archie Renoir. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. I'm not French, y'all, but he is stunning. Yeah, I need him. Um, and you know, while I mentioned the other Zoe, Drew Starkey everywhere right now. I'm so excited for that gay little film my fucking with stomach. Omar Apollo too. It's gonna be crazy. Oh my god, it's gonna be so. And cool. Luca Guadagnaro. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how to say his name. Um, Respect to him though, because he makes banger films. Yes. So also, Daniel. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, I saw Knives a little preview win. for it, and <laughs> it looks interesting concept. Yes. Yeah. I'm actually so excited for that new Knives Out movie. Oh, there is a new Knives Out coming? And Andrew Scott's in there. Oh, shut the fuck up. Yep. I'm so excited. Yep. Knives oh, Out, so Knives Out is right now. something that you showed me, and it's like become like one of my favorite concepts, but it's hard to when it's like it's not always done well you know like the murder yes. mystery vibe like netflix has those ones yes with um jennifer aniston oh, and, and adam sandler and i don't think it's done well at yeah. all whereas like knives out is like i think perfect level like, of like camp- campiness timing. too yeah perfect in that yeah like there are things in that movie that aren't even funny but it's like when i don't remember her name the girl from 13 reasons why she's just like hitting the jewel out of nowhere it's like you wouldn't think to find that funny but when you're watching it you're mm-hmm. laughing because it's like this is so random that it like it's not in it's your so face good. funny yeah but you're like oh my god this is nuts i think the i think the knives out movie is also just like retain your attention because it's like if i look at my phone i'm gonna miss something yeah so you're like locked in yep and i like that i've never been smart enough to figure it out no me too that's nice no i would never have figured out the answer. yeah fantastic mr fox have you seen it no i don't think so it's so good um it's my first Wes anderson film i think okay. so i loved because like i understand he has like a style to him like the yes. flat lay yes, vibe yes, yes, of yes, like yes. and then yeah um it was very cool it is giving fall vibes so oh, i think sure. you should watch it it's like my aesthetic <laughs> yeah and i like that it's just like a funny quirky yeah not taking itself too seriously film yeah. and it's fun to like watch something also animated because i like mm-hmm. don't do that a lot like other than like I watch a animated few... theaters, i'm not watching it at home for some yeah reason. yeah agreed um and like even tv i don't really like other than like bojack horseman which was like my sick obsession for a while <laughs> like i don't like really watch yeah. animated tv um so it was cool to like watch something that like i enjoyed that was animated yeah um i think it has like a cool message behind it too it's like heartwarming yeah i feel like i've heard like you know when people do the TikTok sounds and it's like a sad song in the background. I feel like I've heard. Yeah, you're song. supposed to be my lab partner. Yeah. Do you know that one? That. And it's like yeah. you're not loyal. I said that to someone the other day at work after I watched the film. Did they? Get and it? she just like laughed. No, oh. I don't think she got it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Have you seen Fantastic <laughs> Mr. Fox? You should watch it." I was telling Marty, I quote movies all the time. There's one in specific yes. that Martin's always like, "You quote this movie so much," which is of course White Chicks. However, recently I like quote she's the man a lot and you have to do the specific voice for it. And if I don't get the voice right, people don't get it because the lines are so like one is like the one I was telling Marty. It's like she go she goes, I see that. And I'm like, people are like, what the fuck are you saying? And I'm like, yeah. oh, you've never seen she's the man. And it's like, if you don't get the voice right, they don't get it. The other night I was out with Alyssa 
my friend and she would not stop quoting white chicks and i was like this is i might as well be with monte right no, now like <laughs> and she was saying ones too that were like off the cuff <laughs> don't even remember and i was like what is she yapping about <laughs> um this is so good. but it is so good and it, it's just like fun a quotable movie like i feel like we haven't had a good one in a while yes you know yes i think i i saw a clip of some podcast or somebody saying something where somebody said they haven't seen mean girls which is crazy and yeah they were like it's as quotable as white chicks and everybody knows white chicks is just such a quotable movie if you've seen it but i think it's so like for me what which is so concerning at the age i was watching that movie keep in mind i grew up with three boys in the house including my father um so i was watching movies i wasn't supposed to but it mm-hmm. feels like my like i could probably recite that movie word for word yeah because i've seen it so many white times. chicks even feels more quotable to me than mean girls i feel like yes and I've probably seen Mean Girls more, but it just like has more like zinger style yeah, lines, little, you know? Yeah, yeah. I see it, but yeah. Sorry they don't, they didn't understand your reference. Right, it sucks when those don't hit. No, almost as bad as when your joke doesn't hit. And it's also like sometimes it's so random when you say it too, so it's like mm. I know. <laughs> yeah, the timing so is important. Yeah, timing is so. I'm learning a lot about comedic timing these days, y'all. Which is fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's good for writing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I used to be funny. Is the only other movie? Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> I love Rachel Senna in it, and I think she's like seriously mm-hmm. a star. Like I, I mean, I know that because like I'm obsessed with her. Mm-hmm. Like, but Marty's bio is I love Rachel Senna. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it truly is shocking though when I see her like do something because I don't really understand how there's like she has so much talent. Mm-hmm. I find it like really admirable. Like she's like funny. Like she came from like the stand up world. She can act. Yes. She's re- like wrote bottoms. Mm-hmm. Like it's really admirable. I'm excited to see her in the SNL movie. Yeah. They're starting promo. Mm-hmm. That that will be like an episode, I'm sure. And then for we can sure. talk about our experiences with yes. SNL too. Because for a while there we were <laughs> tuning in to that. There, it, it was rough a little bit. Yeah. It was rough a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um I it has like a pretty heavy storyline, but I think it's done in a tasteful way and also like trigger warning, but it's like about um like rape. But they don't like show it or do anything like mm-hmm. that where it's like like they didn't try the and it ends with us style of like yeah. even showing any abuse. It's like cuts. Yeah. Um which I think I prefer in movies. It's hard like to watch. yeah. Very hard to watch. Um, so, but it still has, like, a heavy thing to it. It's shot so weird that, like, that, my only gripe is, like, it just doesn't feel like it was, like, made well. Like, right when it even opens up, it's, like, it almost gives the vibe of, like, we shot it on my cameras. Like, but I think that, like, is just due to the budget. Like, I'm sure it is. So, like, I'm not holding it against them. But I say that only because it took me a minute to get into it. Mm -hmm. Only because it, like, really did feel like I was watching something, like, almost shot on an iphone yeah yeah and also like the angles they were shooting at and the lighting was like throughout the whole film so inconsistent it was like a dark film but i don't think it was meant to be dark yeah but good yeah loved it it's interesting how all those little parts which i'm sure people who study film and like are like film nerds um understand this but it's like everything goes together like the script the way it's filmed like the lighting the soundtrack it all makes or break something for you yeah i like had thought about that when i was watching it too because i was like i'm i wouldn't maybe use this as an example but like imagining pouring your heart into a script and then just like you not being able to yeah. execute it being shot well because you're like trusting it's someone else to direct yeah, or like you're, you're trying to direct and it's not turning yeah. out how you'd think like yeah I don't know, it, like the amount of people and, like scared me. that go into making a film is crazy yeah and it's like so important to like Community assemble a good team yeah. yeah yeah and it's funny you say that because even when i was watching it like i would see a certain shot and i'd be like i could see them all being around a computer and being like that's such a good shot mm-hmm. and then when it finally comes time to like put it all together being like yeah what uh-huh. the fuck did we just do <laughs> <Wait>. yeah <laughs> huh <laughs> um but yeah that's it for movies should we talk listen or read let's do listen okay charm 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 charms on my list charms um on my list too. i have been going through like a little bit of a claro obsession because of charm mm-hmm. um so claro's also like a 
thing that like Monte pretty much showed me. She's been a Clara lover since day one. Um, and I, I've listened to a lot of her old music, but like not like cohesively in like an album yes. way, kind of. So like doing that with Charm has been nice because it's like one, it's just a beautiful album to res- so listen all the way through. Also, I have Olivia Dean on here with Messi. Mm-hmm. Another album that like so good. I'm just like loving. I've always kind of been this way because I'm like bad at making playlists, but like I love just listening to an album. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to hear a bunch of like different people together. Yeah. Like I want to listen through an album, and both of these are like perfect, consistent, listen, to listen through, all good, yeah. beautiful. Oh my gosh, I've been going through an Olivia Dean phase right now. Yes. I just can't stop listening. It feels so, her voice is just so perfect for this time of year for some reason. Um, And I feel the same thing with Charm. I think Charm came out at the perfect time. Yeah, I agree. It just fits the vibe. So it's like that late summer. Like it's, it's not like, I think I wouldn't consider Clara like somebody I would bump in the summer, you know. Mm -hmm. Obviously we had Brat Summer, so. Yeah. It wasn't really the vibe. However, Charm is just perfect for this time. Charm. Favorites, I have Second Nature, Thank You, Glory of the Snow. Those are like my like bread yes. and butter. Glory of the Snow especially. I like yes. find it impeccably beautiful. Mine are Add Up My Love, Second Nature, and Glory of the Snow. Oh my god. I also really like Thank You. Yes. But Glory of the Snow I think takes the cake. Glory of the Slow Snow is taking the cake. Really Slow dance. The whole so album good. Is just I know because incredible. then um Tara Payne yes. is like beautiful. So good. Um something about Thank You and Gloria the Snow though is like a it's yes. the combo to me. Um and then favorites for Messi, Olivia Dean is UFO, Dangerously Easy, The Hardest Part, and mm-hmm. then just Danger. I'm yes. like Yes, for me, Dive, Danger, and The Hardest Part. I've also been listening to OK Love You Bye religiously. Just so good. Yeah. So good. I found out about Olivia Dean through Dumois because Dumois oh, no. posted that like Harry Styles always before he like has an opener, they like hang out, I guess. Yeah. And she was like, so it's a, like a recent thing for me, like yeah. probably past few weeks, not Same. even maybe. Same. I think um, for me it's been like two months. I started with yeah. Okay, Love You, Bye, and then I listened to Messy and I was like, oh my God, this is so good. So now I'm like really interested because there's also rumors of a new Harry Styles album. Yeah. And if he goes on tour, like them being together, like. The way I'll be sat. Like, oh, lethal incredible. duo. Yeah. I'm trying to think. So. Who opened for Harry when I saw Harry? I don't think. Y'all, when I go to concerts, odds of me seeing the opener, slim to none. Yeah. I'm late. But that would be so incredible. So incredible. And yeah. I think they would be beautiful together. Yeah. Like, I'm like, that makes sense. Yeah. I found Olivia Dean through, I think it was, I'm checking if it was BBC Lounge, but she did a cover of. Oh, a song God, on BBC covers. Lounge, and I'm she's like, also like having a moment right now. Like is. I think she's I think gained like genuinely a hundred thousand yes. followers. Like, so good, yeah. And it was just incredible. Love her. Um, I have short and sweet on here. It's funny because my listened like the thing that I have in my notes is short and sweet, charm, Olivia Dean. I don't know if you had short and sweet in yours, but I don't. But I have mine. God said no, uh, Omar Apollo. Oh, God said no. It's the only other one. Yeah. So um, short and sweet is like. So good. Yes. It is like summer to me somehow because it did yes. come out even a little later too. But it's like I'm almost like I'm not over it because I, there's some great songs on there. Mm-hmm. Like for me, top song would be Don't Smile. Mm-hmm. But Same. it's just like. Yes. I also. I'm already moved on somehow. No Interesting. Offense. Interesting. I like it came out on the 23rd. I think for me. That's insane. Yeah. Because that I feel like. Yeah. I also think her like. When she did the, like, concert thing with Jack Antonoff and, like, that song came out for the first time and everybody already knew the lyrics to, so, like, they're there and they are. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, people have been talking about it for a long time. I haven't done a, full, I didn't do a full listen through of the album when it came out. I f- did my full listen through, like, maybe last weekend. Okay, so I think yeah. that's why for me it feels super new. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Sharpest Tool, Espresso, obviously, and Don't Smile. Bad Chem is also really good. Bad Chem is so good. So good. good. My thing with her music, um, I watched her Apple Music interview, and it's cool to know it's intentional, but, like, her music is kind of, like, supposed to be ironic, Mm -hmm. like, humor. Yeah. And she talks about how, like, when she, like, made Thumbs and, like, Sue Me, like, she's always kind of had this, like, ironic humor in her songs of, like, whatever. Um. 
I mean, I think she, I knew she was always trying to do it intentionally, but I, I, there's not a lot of artists are making like songs where it's like, I don't know. I don't want to keep describing something as like camp, but like, but like her lyrics are like, <laughs> like very straightforward. Like, yeah. I don't also don't want to say the word like naughty but like yeah. you know what I mean no, like I they're like mean. yeah it's just cool I like that she does that yes. I will say it's like I have to be in a certain mood like it's not like yes. I'm throwing on that album unless I'm like probably like trying to like rock out a little yes I am a I would say once again I think we need to find like a definite definition of fan but I'm also not like not a fan I think I'm just a casual listener of hers yeah um because I think most of her albums, I haven't really listened through all the way. And I've truly become more open to Sabrina Carpenter because of Marty. Because you have a lot of her songs that you just play when we're in the car together. And then yeah. I would just listen to them. And I think with this one, this is like the first album of hers that I'm like jumping into. Yes. And so what I would say to that is like you have to listen to emails I can't send. Yeah. I don't think it's I've like listened to it all the way through. way more cohesive of a project. And it's less jokey. Yes. You know what I mean? It's more like kind of like a real depth. Yeah. You, you mean know. all because I loved a boy? Yeah. All because I liked a boy. Yes, oh, and emails I can't send. the The title song is like Chef's Kiss. Times like these, wish I had a time machine. So good. Um, I think Omar Apollo. Yeah. So good. So good. I didn't really listen to his new album until after we went and saw him. But his like other music I've always loved. I've been mm-hmm. really. I went. I. It was probably like last winter when I went through like a really big Omar Apollo phase. I was like going like through three boys came out. Yeah, I was like going through it with someone <laughs> I with someone I liked, and like Omar Apollo like perfectly does like a uh, he also the I love, love yes unrequited love and the vibe of actually like a man singing about a man. Yeah, and it perfect. It's so rare that like you get that like. Yeah. If, like, a guy does that, it's usually, like, in in induendo style where it's, like, they're not going to say, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then I love the way he slips, like, in and out of Spanish. I find it, like, beautiful. Yeah. Even though I don't know what he's saying. It's very... It's like whatever lethargic you almost would be the word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yes. I love Omar Apollo because he goes in and out of Spanish. And I think he also takes, like... I described this when we went to the concert. I was like, it's hard to find an artist that you fully, vi-. at least for me, as like a Mexican woman who like grew up in the U.S. It's like I'm not full in on like I'm not one or the, one or the other. And Omar Apollo does both so beautifully. And I think other artists have been starting to do that, like incorporating yeah. their English and their Spanish, which is just so good. And I think Omar Apollo is a person. He's like so his like internet personality is so funny. He's just a silly, goofy guy, but also so incredibly talented. The visuals at that show were. In fucking sane. They were crazy. They were so good. I loved it. I also appreciated he like had dancers. Yes. Which we were like, how did you pay these people? This place is empty. Like seriously, no offense. Like genuinely. Um, it was, de- it but, was Detroit. It was like our show. Yeah. Maybe it's like our fault. Yeah. yeah. New York. Not our, just our did New York. Yeah. I think yesterday all of Forest Hills was like packed. Which mm-hmm. I want to see a show at Forest Hills so bad. Forest Hills and Red Rocks. Red Rocks. I Wallows like, were just there and like. It looks like such an epic yes. place to see a The concert. no pit is kind of weird because I think especially with like bands like Wallows, you're just used to seeing people in the pit. Yeah. And there's just no pit at Red Rocks, but it just seems so fun. It does. Phoebe Bridgers would be the one person that would die to see at Red Rocks. Well, let's make it happen. Phoebe, sure. please, please. That actually sounds like the perfect size for her. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think it might have been because I've seen a TikTok of her at Red Rocks and I think it was raining and I was like, I oh, need wow. to go there so bad. Yeah. But, yeah. Read? Some good music. Read. Let's do it. Do you want to start? I, I have a start. feeling you have more than me. I did Um, <laughs> just a few highlights. I did not read as much as I would have liked to this summer. And I don't really think I was going through a slump because the books that I did read, I absolutely loved. But I just did a roundup of those, like, those that really stood out to me. The biggest one being Not Another Love Song that I think is a very high contender for my favorite book of the year. I also read Forget Me Not. By Julie Soto this year, which I think I talked about in the last episode that we recorded for Bisexual Influencers because it made me laugh so hard. It was such a good book. Her writing style is so good. I need to read Her that. second book just affirmed that she's like one of my top favorite authors now. And I knew that because she's like such good friends with Allie Hazelwood and I fucking love Allie Hazelwood. And their writing styles are very similar. But Julie Soto just like it is so addicting. Like you cannot stop reading. And I think it's because it mimics the style of fan fiction, which both her and Allie were 
um, fan fiction writers. And it took me back to those days when I would like take my iPad, like my iPad, my iPod. It'll be like 2 a.m. I hear my parents' footsteps. I like put the phone down. I'm like pretending to go to sleep, but I'm like reading fan fiction on like AO3 or what. Yeah. It just took me back to that. And it was so good. Not another love song. It was so good. So good. It has to do with like a, a, ch- a man who plays a cello and a woman who plays a violin. It's so a symphony orchestra. fun to be able to capture that like energy and vibe as an adult. Truly. Yeah. It's like the child. Wild. So good. So childlike good. wonder of it all. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely loved it. Um, Next. I actually just finished this one recently, but also once again, the top contender. Daydream by Hannah Grace. This has been my most anticipated read of the year. Um, I was sobbing. It was never thought I'd cry over a hockey romance. It was so beautifully written. Very different, I would say, from Icebreaker and Wildfire. I loved it. It was so it's like when you relate to both characters and it's like the perfect amount of like smutty, but also the characters have so much depth and you relate to both of them. It it like made me cry because it was like I feel like they're both so real. It was so good. It's also I so love well actually no, this actually kinda gave me a freak out moment because I think they're like sophomores in college mm. in this book. And I'm like What? Yeah. Um, I've been feeling a little bit ancient these past Me years. when I watched I was walking around. Pretty. We live in a college town, so I was walking around our like local town. Y'all. <laughs> the new the newbies. They look like children. Yeah. Yeah. They look so young. Um, so I did read that and then X Vows, which is a second chance romance by Jessica Joyce, which was this was the summer of anticipated reads for me. I loved it. I'm not a huge second chance girl, but Jessica Joyce once again has incredible writing. And I once again did cry. Second chance for me, I am like a very nostalgic person and I get sick to my stomach when I read things like this. Like Happy Place made me feel sick to my stomach because it was so nostalgic and I had this like dual timeline that like I have not been able to reread that book. I don't know if I will be able to reread that book because it made me feel so sick, like in a good way, but also kind of in a bad way. Um, But I really, I really liked it. I think it was done really well because the timeline was like very cohesive. It didn't jump back and forth a ton so i i'm gonna get more into second chance and then lastly i have hood feminism that i think is required reading for anybody i reread it i listened to the audiobook the first time around a few years ago and then i got the physical and i annotated it and that was like my big nonfiction read of the summer that i really enjoyed because it's so good and we should all learn about intersectional feminism but those are the highlights of the books that i read i read a few more but Go look at my Goodreads or my TikTok if you want to know about them. <laughs> yeah. Um, I only read one book and I read Men Explain Things to Me, which... It's like men do be explaining things. <laughs> men do be explaining things. Um, I feel like starting off, it's like not really my position to like, not like, I don't, I feel like everyone can talk about it, obviously, and that's not the point. Like, it should be opening conversations for everyone, if anything, especially men, but... Uh, It feels, like, odd to necessarily, like, critique. I will just say it's, like, very, um, like, it feels, like, medical, like, it feels very statistical. And, like, especially in the beginning, it's, like, stat-heavy and less Mm -hmm. stories. So it's, like, things that I didn't know, things I did know. And, like, it's, I kind of feel the way that you just said about hood feminists or hood Hood feminism. feminism. Um, of like, it should just be required reading for everyone, especially men. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's like an important thing that like, even though I thought it was like a little like surface level, it's like, there's no reason why you cannot like hear that stuff again, considering the fact that it's happening. Like there's yeah. no harm in like, especially for men and me included just to like Chill hear. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will say like, even in like other reviews, they'd say like they were hood feminism was another one that like people would refer to for like a little bit more like in-depth yes. story style more not necessarily i don't know story style is even what they said but like more there's some narratives in depth. there and yes as well as because depth. this one is very like it's it's just a little like surface level but that's yeah. again not a bad thing considering like one it's older it's like 2012 2013 and also it's just like a conver- see that's considered older <laughs> yeah i know but like 12 <laughs> Ten, years yeah yeah um, but it's still like a conversation that needs to be had. For and sure. it's I'm glad I read it. 
it's very heavy. Like, it made me uncomfortable multiple times. I had to, like, put it down. Trigger warning. Yeah. yeah. But it was a good read overall, and I'm glad I read it. Yeah. And I think everyone should. Yeah. I think that's a book I might read, but I'll have to take in, like, bits and pieces. Yeah. That's usually how I feel with a lot of, like, books like that. Or even some memoirs I actually struggle a lot with. For example, Jeanette McCurdy's took me a very long time to finish that book. Because mm-hmm. it's very heavy. Yeah. Um. But I'll definitely check that out. It, like, lightens up. I don't actually want to say it lightens up toward then, but towards the end it becomes not as, like, like, the beginning is, like, stat yeah. after stat after stat. Yeah. That's, like, very upsetting to hear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, that's our summer roundup. I feel like that's it. when I was doing this, I thought I consumed a lot more. Which, to be honest, I do have a lot of, like, I have some stuff that I didn't even put on here because it's, like, not even important to highlight, but. I think I, I watched it, which is concerning because it was only two months that we were gone. Well, no, I think we have like a lot of things in between, but they're probably just not as like, yeah. you know, spoke to us Yes, as much as this stuff. Yes. There's just stuff that I caught. Const- like I rewatched It's Complicated, but I maybe watch that movie once a month purely for that scene when they're making the croissants after like their yeah, pie, yeah, yeah. and they're like in her little bakery. That is my dream. If y'all mm-hmm. ever want to know what my dream life is, that my friends is it. That's, that's my dream. That's a beautiful movie. And I love the house in that movie. It's just so good. I can't wait for a Nancy Myers episode. Yeah, me too. It's going to be so good. I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you if you came back to listen. Thank you if you're a new listener. We are like, I know we said this a lot in the beginning, but we're so excited to be back. We're so excited to be back. This is going to be so much fun. Episodes are going to be posted. Yes. Every week on time. Yes. We will be, as you guys know, on YouTube wherever you get podcasts, rate us if you'd like. Yes. We would really appreciate it. Share it with your friends. Share it with your grandma. Share it with your mom. Sh- share us with whoever your you can. Your second cousin. No, truly. Yeah. Your neighbor, anyone. Your dog. Yes. Yeah. We love you guys so much. Thank you for coming back along with us. Love you. We love you. Bye. Mwah.